My name is Mike Arnold. Uh, a lot of people know me as Mikey Revolt. I am 32 years old, based out of Cleveland, Ohio, born and raised here all my life. I work for LowbrowCustoms.com along with uh, Forever the Chaos Life. How long have I been creating art? Uh, as long as I can absolutely remember, uh, I've been you know, painting and drawing and doodling since elementary school and middle school, would take art classes on any chance I got. If there was art history and art, I'd want to be a part of that. It's just a creative thing that you know, I strived for and I, I always loved. Uh, being able to imagine something and put it on a piece of paper with a pen or, or paintbrush, it was, I don't know, just something that makes your soul feel better. In high school, I started uh, dabbling with uh, bass guitar and I met a few friends that we started a band with and that was a really great time in my life to just experiment in different types of art with not just a you know a paintbrush and a pencil but to actually make feeling with music and you know, it was a punk rock band and we just we'd record on a cassette tape on a single microphone and we thought we were the coolest thing ever and uh, it was just it was really cool to create stuff out of nothing still and uh, that was another avenue that basically took over my life for the next 10 years from ninth grade of high school to 07 I was playing music. I started picking up the guitar maybe mid high school because bass was just a little boring. I always wanted to you know challenge myself to something a little harder so make you know things more difficult for myself and learn guitar on my own started getting in more bands and eventually started getting on tour and it became like a full-time job where I was constantly on the road and just living you know a dream of mine which was really awesome. My last band that I was in we were actually signed to a small independent label. That independent label you know basically ruined my my love and passion for music after about seven or eight months of being on that label. It really opened my eyes to the music industry and, and told me what I did like and what I didn't like about it all. Uh, the media I'm well known for right now is uh, photography. I've been shooting photos probably since late 09. Uh, my mom passed in middle of 09 and uh, it really you know, d devastated me. I kind of lost my ways a bit and didn't know where to go or what to do and just started drinking a lot and my wife basically told me you know you need to straighten up and figure something out and I started painting again for a little while and it just wasn't the same gratification as I remember when I was a kid I saw her camera one day and I asked her hey can you know I mess around with this and she's like yeah just don't break it and that that day was the day that started this entire craziness of what I'm doing now when I picked up that camera, and I, I don't think I've looked back, you know. It's uh, snowballed into a career, which is even, you know, larger in my eyes than even back in the day when I was in bands. So to be here now where I am is, uh, you know, I, life changes so frequently, but, you know, they say the major life changes really shape who you are. What makes my art so cool? I don't know if it's that cool. <laughs> It's all in the eye of the beholder, I guess. I just try to capture what I think looks the best in my eyes and well, the way I see things I want to share with people and I guess people are digging it. I really love seeing motorcycles in motion. Uh, motorcycles were made to move. They were not made to be stared at and sitting in a corner of a room or a, you know, a garage and never to be ridden. Uh, for me, the fulfillment of seeing a motorcycle moving and actually capturing that is something that I strive for. And I ride next to my subjects that I'm t taking photos of on my own personal bike. Uh, I shoot, you know, controlling all manual settings to get the right speed, the right aperture, the right shutter speed, while also controlling my throttle and making sure that I'm lining up the shot correctly. Uh, it's a pretty pretty scary situation sometimes. My wife hates it, but uh, it definitely makes for some really amazing shots and things that you can't just capture in the back of a truck or on the side of a van. You, you find yourself with only one angle of a, of a subject where I can get you know, 30 or 40 different angles hanging off my motorcycle. 
Uh, a lot of people think I'm a little nuts. <laughs> Some people, you know, are a little scared when they ride with me at first, but then after they, they get going and they understand what I'm doing and it's a lot of fun. So that, that to me is something special and I guess a cool factor. I think the toughest part about being an artist is just creating and keeping it fresh and new and not, not redoing the same thing over and over again. With motorcycles, it's great because every single subject is different in their own way, shape, and form. You know, and then I find that finding new spots that are interesting and intriguing backgrounds for that motorcycle is, is also really you know, a lot of fun for me. It brings back to the skateboarding days that I used to you know, also skateboard and you find new skate spots. It's the same thing with photography, finding new you know, sceneries and spots that you can park a motorcycle along with roads to ride on and, and shoot. So uh, that's uh, another thing that I really find a little difficult sometimes is finding a spot, but once you find it or you find that perfect shot, then you just know the rest of the, that spot's gonna be amazing. Do I feel like our generation is shaping the motorcycle industry? Uh, I would say that we're definitely adding to you know, the motorcycle industry and you know, definitely sharing our viewpoints and with social media and uh, technology, it's so much easier to get the word around of what we're trying to accomplish and what we're trying to do and share our art and share parts and things of that nature that people are making and getting it out to the masses is, fast as possible. So I do feel like we are shaping it a little more than probably back in the day. But without back in the day and the history of people doing what they were doing motorcycle wise and chopper world wise, I don't I don't think, you know, it would be possible. So without your roots you can't shape anything. You have to have some kind of inspiration, some kind of, you know, guidance and things to look up to. Without looking up to artists or looking up to different builders or anything that you're doing and not saying that you're not inspired by it from you know history, you're lying to yourself and you're lying to everyone else. So you're always inspired, you're always looking at things that will help your ideas come to fruition in another sense. As for us shaping the motorcycle industry and what it would look like in the future, the skies are the limit. People are innovating stuff every day, new parts, videos, photography, uh, it's countless just non-stop information flowing on social media and different channels that you see coming in from all over the world and to be a part of the history and to be a part in time right now in the motorcycle industry and hopefully putting a staple on it, I'm grateful for that. You know, I hope that one day somebody sees some of my photos and goes, wow, I want to jump on a motorcycle right now because that looks like the coolest thing in the world. And, you know, 67 years from now, if I was remembered for that, awesome.